Hello, my name's Roisin and I'm sick of reading. Hello friends and welcome to my mid-year freakout book tag. I have been seeing this book tag all over my subscription feed for the last month or so, uh, but I felt like I couldn't do a mid-year freakout tag until after the midway point of the year. Um, I felt like I needed to have my full six months of reading sorted before I could do this tag. I'm planning to do quite a few six month wrap up videos, so if you want to see my thoughts on the books that I've been reading so far, you should subscribe. And please remember to like this video if you like it. But without further ado, let's get into the questions. So the first question of the mid-year freakout tag is what is your favourite book you have read so far this year? One of those six month wrap up videos I'm planning to do is my top 10 books of the year so far. So we'll be talking about a lot more books than this. And also the second question on this is what is the best sequel you have read so far? And my favourite book so far this year, if you've watched my channel for a while, you'll probably be able to guess, um, is a sequel. So for my favourite book of the year, um, I, it's not actually my top number one, but it's like my number twos, my joint number twos. So I've got a non-fiction and a fiction answer for this question. My non-fiction answer is Heavy, an American memoir by Aise Lehman. This is a memoir, as the title suggests, about Layman's life growing up in Jackson, Mississippi, his experiences of abuse and his experiences of racism, uh, and when he went to university, racism in the academy, and also his experience of uh, mental health issues, including anorexia and gambling addiction. Um, it's a really, really heavy book to read. That title means a lot of different things in the course of this book. It is also incredibly beautifully written and one of the most tightly constructed books I have read all year. One of my favourite things about this book is how it so subtly hints at themes and repetition um, through the structure of the book. It is a book about uh, the cycle of abuse and how abuse uh, repeats itself, but it is about that cycle of abuse both within one family and within America generally, and the way that these themes play off one another um, is so well done, so cleverly done. I think that this is one of the most powerful books that I have read in a long time. My fiction choice for my favourite book of the year so far is The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abby Dere. This is a book set in Nigeria about a girl called Aduni who is sold into marriage by her father when her family um, fall on hard time. But while she is in that marriage, a tragedy happens and she runs away only to be sold again, this time into domestic servitude. Um, and there is a mystery about what happened to her predecessor, Rebecca. This is again, a really, really difficult book to read. There are There is lots of abuse and sexual abuse and a really hard read. But Aduni is one of the most engaging and endearing protagonists that I have ever read. She is someone who you root for, you feel for, and also who can fight for herself. What Aduni wants most is a louding voice a voice to which people will listen. She wants an education in order to gain that louding voice and she fights for it. A really clever book and one of the other things that I love about it is the way that it talks about sexism in Nigeria but it talks about the intersection between sexism and classism. So whilst Aduni experiences horrible things because she is a woman, the rich women that she meets later in the novel also experience horrible things based on their gender. One woman in particular also perpetrates violence against Aduni um, because of her seeing her as lesser because of her class. And I think that the way that it shows those levels is really powerful and interesting. The best sequel I read so far this year is probably going to be of no surprise to anyone who has watched any of my videos. And um, it's two, but you know, in the same series. <laughs> and that is Bring Up the Bodies and The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel. The Mirror and the Light is probably my favorite book of the year, but because I read Bring Up the Bodies and The Mirror and the Light, one after the other, it's kind of hard for me to say which one I liked more because the whole reading experience, they became just sort of one book that I'd read, um, but I love them. I absolutely love them. Hilary Mantel is an inc incredibly powerful writer. I'm putting the books down because they are massive and my arms are tired. I love the setting of this novel, The Tudor Court, and the way that Mantel has written it, it is so immersive that you look up from the book and feel surprised that you are in the 21st century world. Character studies are so well done. The interactions between the people feel so real. The boys are, who live within Thomas Cromwell's household, they're jockeying for position, their relationships that she maintains them so well throughout that the secondary characters feel as fleshed out as Thomas Cromwell, um, which I think is a really powerful thing. If you want to hear my full thoughts on this series, I did make an entire review video, so I will link it in the cards. So you can check that out if you would like to hear more of my thoughts. Um, I love the way that although we 
if you know anything about Tudor history, you know how this is going to end. You know what happens to Anne Boleyn in this book and to Thomas Cromwell in this one. She still manages to weave in suspense through the incredible use of dramatic irony. Question number three is a new release you haven't yet read but you would like to and for me that is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. Um, I've heard this book raved about all over booktube and bookstagram and it is a book that I uh, put in my anticipated releases video which I will link in the cards and which I had reserved at my library but we went into lockdown and the library's closed on the 23rd of March and I didn't get Hamlet before that point and so I haven't been able to read it yet and so I'm just waiting for the libraries to open so I can finally get my hands on Hamlet. Question number four is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year and for me that is The Revolution According to Raimundo Mata which was actually published in 2009 in the Philippines but is only now being published in the UK and the US. This is the story of Raimundo Mata who is a visually impaired 19th century anti-Spanish Philippine revolutionary and and it's told in the form of a memoir of Raimundo Mata's life. It, I think it is told in a really interesting form. It is the memoir of his life and there's footnotes and and it forwards and afterwards introductions, a nationalist editor, a neo-Freudian psychoanalyst critic and a translator. I'm really intrigued by the form of this and also by reading a book about Philippine history about which I know absolutely nothing. There will be a video of my anticipated summer releases coming out I think on Thursday. And The Revolution According to Raimundo Mata by Gina Apostol is coming out on the 4th of August. The next question is your biggest disappointment of the year. Uh, now I have just read the worst book of the year. I just finished it a few days ago but I'm not going to talk about that because that is for my reading thrillers for a week video which is coming out on Saturday. Disappointing is not necessarily the same as the worst book of the year. It's a book you had high hopes for that did not live up to them. So for that I'm choosing two books. The first one is The Foundling by Stacey Halls which is the story of a woman in 18th century London who gives up her daughter to a foundling hospital. She goes back six years later when she has saved up money in order to get her daughter back only to find that she has already been claimed apparently by her. Stacey Hall wrote The Familiars which I haven't read but I'd heard lots of good things about. The cover was beautiful. 18th century London historical fiction is exactly my sort of thing especially with this kind of intriguing mysterious element. I was really looking forward to it. However the writing was not very good. Um, and by not very good, I mean that for me, a historical novel needs to be immersive. It needs to make me feel like I am in the time of the time. Um, and while the descriptions of the fish markets and of selling uh, prawns from her hat was very interesting and of the coffee houses, the writing itself felt anachronistic and far too modern. Um, and it also felt very melodramatic. I also found the ending far too easy. Nothing was earned in this novel. I didn't understand a lot of the character's motives and a lot of things seemed to happen just for the convenience of the plot. The way that it was written just felt like the author hadn't done enough research. The other book that I was really disappointed by was one that I had a kind of interesting experience with in that I wasn't sure I wanted to read it when I first heard about it because it's a retelling of a classic and that's not generally something I really enjoy. However then I heard lots of people on booktube reading it and and really rating it thinking it was really good and so I thought okay I'll give it a try and that is The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow. This one again felt a little anachronistic but that mostly wasn't the problem. This tells the story of Mary who is uh, the third sister of the Bennett family from Pride and Prejudice. My problem with this book was that Mary was insufferable. Mary was definitely a not like other girls kind of girl who all of her internal monologue was putting down other girls um, whilst she had very low self-esteem but she put it forward in a way that was uh, arrogant at the same time. I found her very difficult to get along with because she was always disparaging her sisters and she was disparaging her sisters in a way that wasn't um, oh they're being mean to me and that hurts me it was in a oh but they're just so pretty that of course they get everything handed to them um, like it was really not very nice and then later on there is discussion of Wordsworth's poetry that felt like two teenagers talking about GCSE level understandings of poetry um, which I found really frustrating because it was supposed to be passion that these two people had um, and it was supposed to lend credence to their romance but it all felt very surface level understanding. Overall I just thought the ending again was too easy and um, not earned and um, really predictable. Both of those books, The Foundling and The Other Binnett Sister, I gave three stars because they did have things going for them. Not That's not a bad rating, it's just a meh rating. 
but I always seem to go for a rant and I think it's because I had such high hopes for both of them. The biggest surprise, and again I have two books, the first one of those is If I Never Met You by Mario McFarlane, which is a book I read for my reading romance for a week uh, vlog, which I will leave in the cards if you would like to go and check it out. Um, the reason this was a surprise is because I have never given a romance book more than three stars. I've always found them to be just, yeah, enjoyable, but kind of like Candy Floss. If I Never Met You by Mario McFarlane is your standard fake dating trope about a woman who had broken up with by her partner and um, still has to work with him and his girlfriend is pregnant and she wants to get back at him and then there is the law firm where she works at has a playboy who needs a girlfriend in order to convince the senior partners that he's a serious person um, and so they fake date. It is very contrived but I really enjoyed it. I thought that the characters were really well fleshed out, which I find can be um, a problem in romance. A lot of the times they are very two-dimensional. I liked the way that it talked about microaggressions at work. Uh, being a woman in a male-dominated workplace and being a black person in a white-dominated workplace, I thought that it, is, it addressed those issues very well. It also addressed issues of gender imbalances in relationships really well and also female friendships. So it felt, even though the plot, the main plot, was very much a basic rom-com plot, I thought that the world that it built was really fully fleshed out and very intelligent. And the other one is Hitting a Straight Lick with a Crooked Stick by Zora Neale Hurston. I'd never read any Zora Neale Hurston before. She's a very famous classic author, one of the most famous writers of the Harlem Renaissance, but I'd never read any Harlem Renaissance writers before either. And this is a short story collection, again, which I don't usually read a lot of. Um, so I was really, really blown away by the beauty of these stories. I also thought that the introductions by Tiara Jones and Genevieve West really helped to ground my understanding in the history and the importance of Hurston's work. And um, I just fell in love with the characters and with the way that this is writ written. I listened to the audiobook of this and because it is written in African-American vernacular English uh, of the American South in the 1920s, it is not a vernacular with which I am very familiar. So I was really glad that I listened to the audiobook because I felt that that really lent um, a greater understanding of the cultural setting of the book. But these stories are funny, they are heartwarming, and they are really, really beautiful. So then my favourite new author. Now I have read lots of books by different authors that I really, really loved, many of which I've already mentioned, but I haven't read multiple books by many authors. So I think I'm going to have to just say Hilary Mantel is my favourite new author because I've read nearly 1500 pages of her work this year and I absolutely loved every single page. Before this year I had only read Wolf Hall, so having read now the entire trilogy I can safely say that I love Hilary Mantel's writing and I definitely want to read more of her work. The next question is a fictional crush and I just can't answer it. There are no people from any of these books that I have a crush on. It's not really the kind of book I read or the way that I read. Next is a book that made you cry and I don't think I've actually cried at a book so far this year. However, in addition to The Girl with the Louding Voice and Heavy that I mentioned earlier, two books that came close were The Shadow King by Maza Mengiste, which is set in Ethiopia in the 1930s during the Italian invasion about a woman who has recently become orphaned and become a servant in a household and she's not treated very well and then the war happens and they end up being involved in guerrilla warfare and these women become women warriors and also are captured by one of the most violent and horrible generals of Mussolini's army and it is a really hard book to read with lots of violence, torture, sexual violence, um, there is gendered violence and also colonial violence that is explored in here and it's really rough um, but the characters are so fleshed out that you really feel for them. Even characters who are involved in the colonial army, so there is a character called Ettore who is the photographer for this horrible general and he photographs the torture and he is obviously complicit in what happens but he is also Jewish and is being warned that he could this general would deport him back to Mussolini and therefore to a concentration camp at any moment if he's not careful um, and so it is a really difficult book to read and then the other one is also set at a similar time period and that is How We Disappeared by Jing Jing Li and this tells the story of the Japanese occupation of Singapore during the Second World War and it is a story about a woman who was kidnapped and taken as a comfort woman and again there is a lot of sexual violence in this book and it is a really really hard read but a really beautiful powerful and important read too. Uh, next is a book that made you happy and for that I am going to say With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I don't read a lot of YA but I really enjoyed this story of a girl who's 
a teenage mother and has a passion for cooking and um, ends up on a culinary course as, as part of her senior year and um, there is magical realism imbued in the way that um, this girl when she cooks um, her food gives people memory. I thought this book was really beautifully written and it was a really I really felt for all of the characters but it was not as deep and difficult as a lot of the books I read. The other one that made me happy this year was Natural Selection, A Year in the Garden by Dan Pearson. Dan Pearson is the gardening writer for The Observer in the UK and he this is a collection of 10 years of his gardening articles and it was just a really lovely book to read, especially as we were coming down into, coming into lockdown. I've been getting into gardening and um, it was just a nice way to explore the outside and the seasons and nature and how even when the world seems to be entirely different from the world you expected, some things stay the same. Then we have the most beautiful book you've read this year. Two books with beautiful covers that I did have my hands on earlier in the year is Braised Pork by Anne Yu, which is a book um, set in Beijing about a woman who um, her husband commits suicide and she finds a picture of a strange fish man next to him and she ends up going an excursion to Tibet and also to this weird underwater world. A very interesting read, very different from anything else I've read this year. And then also the cover of A Long Petal of the Sea by Isabel Allende, which is the story of Spanish refugees from the end of the Spanish Civil War when fascism takes over in Spain, who end up in Chile and their experience of life in Chile and under Pinochet. Um, and again, that was a very beautiful, moving read and has such a gorgeous cover. And finally is what books do you need to read? Well, there are no books that I actually need to read for any reason, except that I've set myself the a six weeks, six genres challenge, which you can watch about here, which has my full TBR for all of these genres. But the ones that I need to read currently this week are Upon a Burning Throne by Ashok K. Banker, which I first heard about on Sala Reed's channel and is an epic fantasy novel based on Indian folklore. And The Bone Clocks by David Mitchell, which is a fantasy novel set in the UK about a girl who is a teenage runaway. And these are the two books I'm trying to read this week. Very big books. So wish me luck. So that is the end of the mid-year freakout tag. Please answer the questions below if you don't have a channel or if you do uh, let me know if you've made a mid-year freakout tag video because I would love to see that. Please like this video if you liked it and remember to subscribe because I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. Thank you for watching. Bye bye! <laughs>